All right. So the Hajj, there's been quite a, an uproar in in the Western in the West, and especially the UK, the States, I believe. So what we had, I'm not, uh, from what I'm aware, what Saudi had was a kind of uh, almost like a wakil system going on. So the rest of the Muslim world who want to go on Hajj, they have uh, this kind of uh, Qur'a system, which is a lottery system. So you select, you put your name forward, um, you know, it's, it's a roll of the dice, if you like. Whoever's numbers come up, they get allocated a token to Hajj. And naturally they have, so for example, if you have certain mah maharim, mahram with you, I think they get approved as well. So that's how it kind of works. So your application, so an application has people associated with it. So let's say you've got your parents, your children, whatever. Now, that was the rest of the Muslim world. However, for uh, the West, I... I, I assume Europe too, but definitely the UK and and westward. So we're talking about the US, Canada, etc. They didn't have the same system. They had like a an agency system. So they had these intermediaries who were approved by Saudi, and they often and they kind of had uh, they would be the middle people that would enable the visas. If you try to apply for a visa not through one of them, it was next to impossible that you would get a visa. It had to go through these kind of approved people. And they weren't that many for the entire country. They, you know, it's a very, it's like a bottleneck squeeze. So all the multiple agents that you had that were travel agents, Hajj agents, Umrah agents, you know, these kind of uh, travel agencies, they usually, most of them were all under these few agents so they would obviously pay these people these people would had the ultimate monopoly of um you know getting the hajj so even if you set up this is what um you know comes to to light so what the new saudi system was that look scrap all of that and now we're simply anybody who wants to go can just apply online if they're approved ahlan wa sahlan if they're not you know, tough luck next time, maybe. So, hmm. So, as opposed to these people just having an, an, uh, the middle people where there was more of a window, I guess, allocated, or I guess maybe there wasn't a ceiling. So, it was just whoever these people approved. Uh, I take it. It may have been like that. Allahu alam. So, now is this any good? Is it bad? I don't. I mean, one thing for sure is that. You see, so the downside is that, well, people can't go with their tour agencies. So they can't go. So you had these agencies who set up these Hajj tours and they would have a selected imam. They would take you over there. They would kind of guide you, do all the thing. And you'd just be with your tour, whoever they are, whatever people, let's say in the dozens or 50 or whatever they are, 100 or whatever these people are, you would just go with that tour group or maybe just 20 people, or however it was. Now, it's you're just independent. So you just go on your own, and they will just have allocated spots where this is where the Brits will kind of set up camp. This is where the Brits rest, just as they've always had for other countries, like Pakistan, all the Pakistanis go there, all the Chinese go there, all the Indonesi Indonesians go there. So now they'll just have British people in one place, Americans, etc. So you lose out on that. Let that very targeted, specific imam, uh, small catered group with subtle provisions that was slightly different. But the upside is that the monopoly has now been snatched away. It's it's a free for all. The price has come drastically down because these Hajj agencies, some of them were extortionate. I mean, it was ridiculous what they were charging people to go on Hajj. Most people cannot afford a Hajj like that. They cannot afford Umrah like that. Most people, just speaking, just being honest, most people can't. You know, most people can't pay whatever it is, fifteen thousand uh, pounds, twenty thousand uh, pounds. They can't pay this kind of stuff to to go on Hajj. So, and especially, you know, it's it's not just sometimes one person going on Hajj. There might be a few. So. It's brought that down to a fraction 
like maybe 20% of the cost. So, so you can see that, wow, okay, where was the rest of the money going? <laughs> well, anyway, <laughs> why not, huh? Why, why, why not, huh? <laughs>